just three crew members on board the station right now, but that's going to change by the end of this week as three additional crew members getting ready to launch to the International Space Station tomorrow evening. Uh, U.S. time is NASA's Jeff Williams and Russian cosmonauts uh, Alex Kropochka and Alexei Ovchinin are in the final stages of getting ready for their liftoff from Baikonur. Just before Jeff Williams headed down uh, to Kazakhstan from Star City, the training base in Russia, my colleague Pat Ryan uh, was able to talk to Williams, asking him how he was doing and if he felt ready for his trip to the space station. Yeah, I feel very ready to be uh, going back to the space station. The, the training process that we have is uh, very good. It's uh, very mature now. We've, we've uh, I think, uh, made it more effective and efficient over the years. Uh, and it continues to be improved all the time. So I feel, feel very prepared to go. Uh, I am very confident that uh, my crewmates are, are prepared and ready to go. And we're looking forward to, uh, to a, a great mission. Tell me about what you're looking forward to, uh, whether it's operational highlights or, or some special experiments that you're going to work on this time. Well, this will be the first time that I'm not engaged with the assembly of the space station. Uh, as, as you know, it's uh, long been complete. Uh, so now it's in full utilization mode. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to experiencing the space station in that phase of its uh, lifetime. Uh, of course, we have a wide variety of experiments that we're uh, anticipating. Uh, to include uh, uh, experiments from across the spectrum of the different science disciplines. Uh, I'm looking forward uh, in particular to uh, some of the experiments that uh, uh, are studies of the human body uh, and to understand the effects of the environment on the human body so that we can develop countermeasures to support future exploration. I'm looking forward also to a couple of planned spacewalks that we have uh, later in the summer. Uh, one to, to integrate a docking adapter to the space station uh, so, uh, in preparation for uh, the future commercial uh, crewed vehicles uh, that are planned uh, to fly in the next few years to rotate uh, crews from American soil. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, of course, this will be a new crew combination uh, that I'm flying with. And uh, that's always good. I've uh, counted it up uh, recently, and I think I've been on orbit uh, w at the space station with 45 different people wow. over the years, both my crewmates on uh, station crews as well as the shuttle crew, as well as uh, visiting shuttle crews that have come to the space station while I've been there. So this will add a few more folks uh, to, that, to that list. Um, and it's been uh, a real highlight of my career and my life uh, to be able to share this uh, magnificent experience with, uh, with those folks. You're about to become the first American to uh, launch on a third long-duration mission to this station. Does getting ready for it get easier as you go along? Uh, it gets easier maybe in that there's no surprises in the process. Uh, you're just repeating the preparations, getting mostly refresher trained on all of the different elements. Um, I would, so far it hasn't been um, uh, as challenging uh, as say the previous ones in just in personal preparations, uh, knowing that my wife and family are ready to be separated from me and, and, and of course me getting ready to be separated from them. I think my wife is well trained in this as well. Uh, and I appreciate the, the support that she's been over the years and in particular uh, as we approach um, uh, the beginning of, of doing this all over again. Your experience on board this station goes back to a shuttle mission that flew before Expedition 1 did. Uh, are you finding yourself becoming a part of the history of this project? Well, I've always felt uh, uh, the awareness of being privileged to be part of history in the making with this program and space exploration in general, I think, uh, will give each of us that perspective. Uh, but you're right, um, it has occurred to me in a more significant way in recent uh, months in particular uh, that I've been privileged to be part of the building of the space station from beginning all the way until now through the full utilization uh, mode. And it has been uh, just a, an amazing undertaking an amazing human achievement that uh, none of us, of course, take for granted. Um, the, the people that I've had an opportunity over the uh, 20 years now uh, to work with uh, 
in this endeavor, literally hundreds and perhaps thousands of people uh, directly and indirectly, uh, certainly in the thousands and, and ten th tens of thousands, and in this international partnership, it's been a privilege to work with the folks and to continue to work with them. There's no place that I've seen in my lifetime uh, that has a work environment like we have. Um, we're, we're all on a team. We're all focused on a, a mission. We're all here because we believe it's important for the people of Earth, um, and it's just been a great privilege to be a part of that. Tell me about how you plan to take advantage of the station's communications capabilities and, and social media to share what you're doing up there and what you see out the window. Well, the social media, of course, is a big part of uh, most people's world nowadays, um, and I plan on uh, using that with a, a help from a few folks in Houston uh, who are helping me do the actual posting and maybe integrating some of the elements. Uh, but I'm doing uh, most of the writing, uh, virtually all of the writing, um, and trying to, to uh, present some products from my previous flights as well as making videos as we go along here. Uh, to bring people along on the journey, one, and also to uh, to attempt to uh, remind folks uh, uh, of the significance of this accomplishment that we call the International Space Station, orbiting the Earth continually, and uh, now with a, a human presence uh, that's uh, been continuous uh, longer than 15 years. You're looking forward to riding that Soyuz again? I am looking forward to it. Every rocket ride is, of course, stands alone, and it's uh, uh, in anticipating uh, all of the elements of it. I mean, it's still amazing uh, to me, even, and it's amazing to everybody I talk to that uh, you launch off the pad, and less than nine minutes later, you're in orbit, going that orbital velocity uh, around the Earth every 90 minutes. By the time you get back home to Houston, you'll have been away for seven months or so, on top of all the time that you've spent away from home to train for this flight. Uh, tell me why you think what we're going to learn on this space station is worth making that kind of sacrifice. Well, um, I think that uh, we're all called in life to, uh, to a purpose that's greater than ourselves, and I just t happen to be privileged uh, with this calling in life. Um, and, and it is a great privilege to be part of this, uh, to be part of such an endeavor as the International Space Station. Certainly, I think history has shown that uh, uh, the, the history of civilization is the history of, of discovery and exploration and trying to expand the boundaries that we're currently living in. And space exploration is, is no different. And this chapter that we call the International Space Station is certainly a significant step forward in that. So it's a a privilege to be part of it. Uh, it's a platform where we will uh, continue to develop the technologies and the capabilities uh, that will enable future exploration. So it's a significant chapter in that book of space exploration. Jeff, thanks for the talk. Have a good trip. Have a lot of fun in space. Thank you, Pat. Great to talk to you today. <laughs>